Hello everyone, welcome again. In this software testing tutorial, we are going to learn seven principles of testing. Now these principles of testing or seven principles of testing that we are going to discuss today are really, really important to understand and know what principles of testing are. And these are also important in terms of interview because if you are going for a you know a interview, you might be asked about the principles of testing and they might pick one principle of testing and will ask you about you know explain one of the principles of testing so uh, understanding these is important and how you can basically correlate these in the real life uh, scenarios or real testing scenarios that's what we are going to discuss in this particular tutorial so the first principle of testing says early testing what exactly that means is basically Early testing, as the name implies early, uh, the word early, you start testing pretty early in the cycle. So when we talk about software development life cycle, so the traditional approach, which is the waterfall approach, uh, the, the life cycle was something, you know, uh, in, in terms of, you know, like waterfall. So I'll cover the phases of waterfall approach. So you had, you know, um, the requirements phase, then you have design, then develop and then test and then other you know like deploy and maintenance phase right so it was more of a you know waterfall uh, sort of structure and that that is why it was known as waterfall approach in this particular approach the problem was um, you know you you had the requirements frozen and then you start with the next phase so a phase need to be completed before you can start in the next phase and you can see the testing came after the development, right? So what this early testing principle suggests is you do not wait for testing in the life cycle to basically come to that particular phase. You actually start your testing right from this particular phase or requirement or design or develop phase. In every phase of the software development life cycle, you perform the testing and that's what early testing means. Now, you would be having a question, how can we test when we don't have anything to, you know, like there is no code being developed. So testing is not just about verifying the working code or the working software. It's basically verifying the overall documentation that is being provided. So, for example, you go through the requirement, you get into those discussions with the team and understand what requirements are and how they are being you know um, written or if there are any gaps that you can determine based on those requirements similarly when there is a design phase you can um, go through the design as as a tester and understand how the design is uh, defined or how how the overall design is and how you are going to basically test it uh, and put put the testers uh, you know hat and understand based on the design how the overall software is going to function so early testing says that you do not wait for testing until the testing phase is there in the development life cycle so that's the first principle now this was the problem with the waterfall approach that testing phase was coming after the development phase or multiple phases when they got completed and that is why the development approaches have evolved and Agile or Scrum is the latest one wherein, you know, you have shorter iteration. So you test almost in every cycle. Um, I mean, you, you test in every cycle, not almost. It's, it's every cycle or every iteration you test and you test in all the phases, right? So phases, uh, I mean, there will be requirement. There will be, you know, design in a smaller, shorter iteration as well. But testing is involved in all the phases of software development lifecycle and that is what early testing is all about you start testing as early as possible right so that's the first principle the second one is about testing shows presence of defects now testing will show that the defects are present in the software but it can never show that the product is defect free we have already understood about the examples of big organizations uh, you know, Yahoo, uh, Flipkart, where they have, you know, even though they had such a huge testing capability, 
still their product or the the softwares that they launched had failed in you know um, in, in different circumstances so when these organizations would have tested those software they would have tested it thoroughly so testing shows the presence of defect but it never shows that the product or the software is defect free right so that's the second principle and that is why when the software is deployed into production you will see the production defect coming through right so based on different circumstances a software which might be working now in your test environment might not work in you know a production environment or uh, maybe in production environment there is some difference in the hardware or the software right so that you can't exactly replicate in your software or in your testing environment so testing shows presence of defect but it never you can never claim for a software that my software is 100% defect free and it will never fail right so that's the second principle third principle is exhaustive testing is not possible what this means is exhaustive so exhaustive testing is not possible so say for example you are testing a web page right and a web page has say for example you know uh, this particular text field right which just accepts one character in it okay so it could be number you know it it it, 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 it accepts any of the alphabet say for example one character so just to test this 100% this text box 100% because it accepts one character at a time you need 26 combinations of you know uh, uppercase 26 combination of lowercase right so if it just accepts those characters and then you have to go through the negative scenarios right so you have to basically go through and test with the special characters that it's not you know uh, accepting any of the special characters or any numbers so you you can uh, imagine the amount of combinations that you have to test this particular text box which just accepts one character right now say for example in your web page you have you know a couple of text boxes so first name last name right date of birth so these you know are very commonly uh, web page text boxes that they, that are available right so now if you have to test all these text boxes that are present on a particular web page with so many different combinations it is a nightmare even though if you are using the automation tool to do all those permutation combination it is not possible right it is highly unlikely that you will be able to you know um, achieve 100% of the combination or the possibility of exhaustive, exhaustive testing for any of the software applications so third principle exhaustive testing is not possible okay the fourth one is defect clustering right so what this means is that defects are found so most of the time um, the modules where uh, or, or basically the complex modules where you will find couple of defects those are the modules where you will find most of the defects okay so defects are clustered in few particular modules okay so defect clustering if you are finding the defect in one or two particular modules and you are finding you know many defects there is a possibility that there are a lot more defects in those two or three modules that you see right so wherever you will find a lot of defects and those defects are related to particular modules most of the chance or it's highly possible that those modules will have a lot more defects and that's what defect clustering is defects are clustered in few particular modules of the software because of the complexity of those modules the integration etc so it might be possible that defects are clustered for those particular modules and simple modules or the modules where you don't find much defect there won't be lot many defects yes so that's the fourth principle of testing defect clustering all right then uh, you have pesticide paradox now as the name here pesticide so pesticide as you see even in agricultural uh, you know in agriculture or farming when you use same pesticide again and again in the crop so at 
some particular time that pesticide stops working right so the the um, pests uh, build the immunity against those pesticides so same pesticide is not going to work for those pests anymore and similar is the case in the testing so if you are having test cases and same set of test cases you are executing for each and every version of the software or again and again to try to find out new defects it's not going to help you out in order to find new defect you need to have the new set of test cases right same test cases won't find you new defects so that's the fifth principle pesticide paradox similar to what pesticide does for the crops um, it is same with the testing all right then testing is context dependent what does this context mean now say for example um, I'm testing my personal blog all right and then I'm testing a banking app okay so banking app will basically or how you are going to test banking app the context or the complexity will be completely different for the banking app as compared to personal blog because personal blog is very minimal set of features and even if there is you know some features that are not working it doesn't impact much right i mean there is not a lot of you know revenue impact or there is not of uh, no you know um, other any other sort of impact but in terms of banking app, there are so many customers for a bank that rely on the application. So if that application is down, I might, uh, as a bank, lose the reputation and lose the customers, so revenue, okay? So testing is context dependent means it, depending which uh, sector or which, you know, uh, field you are trying to test or which type of software you're trying to test, Test type will depend based on that. So banking app um, will have more rigorous, you know, testing. If it is safety critical or, you know, like air, airplane uh, software, there will be a lot of other criteria that you need to fulfill in order to say, yes, this software is tested successfully, right? So even documentation that needs to be generated for different, you know, context will be different, right? So testing is context dependent is sixth principle of testing. Then absence of errors policy. So what this means is, say for example, um, I have a software and I have tested, you know, that particular application and that application doesn't have any defect as such. I mean, I have tested it thoroughly. Um, uh, all, all the test cases that we have written have passed and there are no defects, outstanding defects. We have fixed everything, all right? Now, similar example I'll take, you know, um, customer gave us a requirement, I need a car with four wheels, okay? So, um, you have this car and you have put four wheels, okay? So, it meets the requirement and four wheels are there. So, when you will try to, you know, uh, test that, yes, four, uh, are there four wheels in a car? Yes, there are four wheels in the car. Um, and this is, you know, like a car shape. But then you didn't clarify that where these four wheels should be, right? So there is there is nothing that you clarified whether this car will be fit for use or whether this is what customer wants. The customer wants wheels at this particular location or he wants wheels at this particular location so that car can move, right? So you didn't clarify that from the customer and based on what requirements customer has given, you have verified and you have said, yes, my software or my car is defect free because customer told uh, I need a car with four wheels and I have put four wheels, so four wheels are there and this should be fine, right? So this is not fit for use. And this is what absence of error policy is. So if they, even though if there are no errors, right? Even though there are four wheels and all four wheels are rotating properly, even though this, you know, there is in, in terms of what requirement customer has given, um, you meet those requirements. But if it is not fit for use, then that is not good, even though there are no errors or no defects in the software. Okay, so this is absence of error policy. 
basically if your software doesn't have any errors or bugs that doesn't mean that it is still fit for use unless and until you question your customer um, your client that you know whatever you have developed is what he needs or is fit for use all right so these are seven principles of testing i hope these were helpful and clear for you to basically understand and if you go into any interview and have been asked any of these you know principles you would be able to answer them very clearly if not please comment out in the comment section below and i'll try to clarify any of the doubts that you will have in any of the principles that we have explained here all right so that's all for this tutorial Please do share and subscribe and thank you for watching.